I'm Stuart Bell, the main composer and keys player from Citizen Kane. This is the first in a series of videos that I plan to make in which I'll discuss in greater detail the story, ideas and concepts behind my new album, The Antichamber of Being, which is the first part in a trilogy based on my own life experiences as a lucid dreamer. Each video will cover one song from the album, starting with the opening track, Decoherence. It starts off with Simone Rossetti from Italian band The Watch, and he plays the lead character on the album, the part of me, the dreamer, and he's singing about a recurring dream that I've had throughout my life, a dream of floating in white light. And this dream is one of my earliest memories, and I believe it could go right back to the womb. So it's a recurring theme on the album, and it's something that I'll talk about in more detail later on. Another early memory for me is of my mum singing me to sleep with a lullaby, and it would often be the last thing that I heard as I drifted off and descended into the world of dreams. Dreams which would often become nightmares. And the rest of the song is about one of those nightmares, which eventually inspired my first ever lucid dream. It was a recurring nightmare about a monster that lived in the cupboard at the bottom of the stairs. And in the dream, the door would open and out of the darkness, a shadow would emerge and a voice would shout, Yum, yum, here I come. And I would run away and wake up terrified. Now I got speaking to my older brother about this. He is the character, the teacher on the album, who's played by Phil Allen, Citizen Kane's guitarist. And I told my brother about the nightmare and he said to me, matter of factly, next time it happens, just tell yourself you're dreaming, wake yourself up. So next time it happened, I remembered his advice and I woke myself up. I'd done it. I had escaped from the nightmare, but now I found myself in the dark, alone, in the middle of the night, with a monster on my mind. So it wasn't really much better than before. So after further discussion, my brother suggested that the next time it happened, I should face up to the monster, tell him it was my dream and that I wasn't afraid of him. So once again, I found myself facing that cupboard dwelling entity as he came out of the shadows with his now familiar and terrifying catchphrase, Yum, yum, here I come. And once again, I remembered my brother's advice. As you're probably aware, when you're dreaming, it seems as real as here and now. So it took a lot of courage for me to stand up to him when all I wanted to do was run away and hide and wake myself up. But I stood my ground and as he came towards me, I shouted, This is my dream! He kept coming, so I shouted again, I'm not afraid! But I was, I was terrified. He was now coming towards me with his hand out and I said something like, Stop! Stop! You have no power here. You have no power when I said that, everything changed. The monster emerged out of the shadows and I realised it was actually Sweetums from the Muppet Show. You know, the ten foot tall, brown hairy Muppet. And he came towards me with his hand out and he said, Yum, yum. I just wanted to give you a sweetie. <laughs> I was totally amazed. I was stunned, but I was also hungry. So I started to unwrap this small piece of candy. And as I did so, I remembered my manners. But when I looked up to thank the monster, he was gone. I then went outside into the dream and I was totally gobsmacked at how real everything was. And then I woke up to the realisation that I'd had my first ever proper lucid dream. This story of the first time that I controlled my dreams was actually the inspiration for the whole album. I'd always wanted to write a storybook based on those events, which would teach children how to overcome their nightmares and learn lucid dreaming for themselves. So when I was stuck trying to think of a concept for my solo project, I started work on the storybook and I quickly realised this is the perfect starting point for the album. 
So while I was writing the album, I also finished the storybook. And this is the monster as he appears in there. I didn't think that Jim Henson would be too happy about me using one of his Muppets. So I came up with this guy instead. He was actually inspired by another monster from my childhood. Around about the time that I started lucid dreaming, I came across a book called Where the Wild Things Are by Morris Sendak. And although I didn't realise at the time, it's a story of a young boy who learns to confront his negative emotions, his wild things as they're represented in his dreams in the book. And for anyone who knows the story, they'll know that the young boy faces up to his demons and becomes friends with them, much in the same way as I did with the monster in my dream. So at the end of this song, we have Arjen Lucasen, who plays the part of the monster in the cupboard, which is quite fitting, I guess, given that he's a tall, friendly, hairy creature himself. And his closing line in the song is, I'm not your foe, not your I am foe. your higher self. Your and this sets the theme for the second song, with the realisation that the monster in the cupboard was not all that he appeared to be. And I'll also discuss in more detail the concept behind the higher self at a later point. Incidentally, these t-shirts are available to buy at the moment. Here you can see the two different designs available with the logo included on these ones. So if you'd like to support this project, not only will you be helping to cover the costs of this album and fund the production of part two of the trilogy, but you'll also be gaining a unique piece of artwork from my childhood dreams on a good quality black t-shirt, of course. Here's the address for the t-shirt fundraising campaign. Thanks for watching.